Miss Harris was so proud of her boyfriend from that day. She boasted in the canteen every single day. He was highly placed in society and well-educated, someone who belonged to a very rich family that lived in the opulent part of town. Rest in cardboard, Miss Thompson, she announced grandly. You will have the honor of attending my wedding, reflecting. This was it, her last shot at something spectacular. I give you yourself making crap in television. I had no intention of attending such an event. I didn't care about seeing her in her wedding dress, and I was sure I'd be seated with the other female employees. No matter how glamorous the venue or how delicious the food might be, I didn't want to go. As I was thinking that, Miss Harris said, Oh, right. I'll show you a picture of his house, and started operating her smartphone. Ah, found it. This is it, she said, bringing her smartphone screen closer to me. There was a house I recognized. It's amazing, isn't it? The luxurious and wonderful house is his family home. They must be incredibly wealthy, Miss Harris said. My eyes did not leave the screen of her smartphone. Oh my, are you surprised? If you want, I can show you pictures inside the house as well, she continued. When she slid the photo, a sight I was even more familiar with appeared. This is a luxurious house that you, Miss Thompson, probably couldn't even dream of entering. Are you envious? She said. Cutting off what she was saying, I hurriedly spoke, Um, this is actually my family home. My name is Kimberly Thompson, an employee at a small to medium-sized company. I am already 34 years old, but still single. I've been working at the company where I got a job right after graduating college for over 12 years now. Being the oldest among the female employees, I'm in a position often referred to as the old maid, and all the other women who joined the company at the same time as me have left after getting married. In other words, I'm the only one who kept working there. It's not that I'm working there to find a husband. I just diligently work every day. I tend to keep to myself like being alone, and I'm not very good at socializing. So, from the perspective of those around me, I'm undoubtedly a stick in the mud, but I'm serious about my work, and because I've been at the company for a long time, it seems like the other employees treat me carefully, with some respect. Well, I can understand their feelings. I don't go to any social events with my co-workers, and I don't exchange contact information with anyone. I don't hang out in my private life, and I only engage in conversation when absolutely necessary. So it's no wonder they find me boring and don't bother inviting me. But because I've been at the company for a long time and I'm good at my job, they can't complain. I'm quite a senior. I think that's the kind of awkwardness I bring. As for me, I actually find it convenient not being approached by others. I can work in peace and I can spend my breaks freely. Plus, this job doesn't involve any entertaining or client-facing tasks, so I'm not caught up in any troublesome human relations drama. I can spend my days off watching as much of my favorite anime as I want. I also like reading, so going to the bookstore and impulse buying books based on their covers is enjoyable. At first glance, some people might feel that my life is lonesome and empty, but I thought this quiet yet peaceful life made me feel happy. However, everything started to change when a young woman joined the company. She was the complete opposite of me, a friendly, cheerful woman with excellent communication skills. Her name is Michelle Harris. Miss Harris was the type to actively approach others, and she seemed particularly popular among the male employees. She was cute and charming, so I figured she easily captured the hearts of the men. When I watched her, I felt like I was watching a character from a movie because she was so different from me, a bright, honest woman at the center of the group, probably the type of woman I would have a hard time dealing with. While thinking such things, I happened to overhear a group of female employees chatting away cheerfully in the restroom. This all happened when they came into the restroom while I was in there, fixing their makeup, and freely starting to gossip and complain. You know that new girl, Harris. Don't you just find her annoying? I know, right? 
She seems just like she's trying to please men, doesn't she? Definitely gives off that vibe. That has to be on purpose, right? She's constantly trying to appear cute. It's so annoying. Her only appeal is that she's young, isn't it? She can't even do her job properly. Isn't it embarrassing to just chase men all the time? Such harsh words. It's only natural that a new employee can't do their job as well. Moreover, I thought to myself that maybe Harris has to rely on the male employees because you guys aren't properly teaching her how to do her job. I have a habit of occasionally observing Harris. She was so different from me in appearance and personality. I have seen her being coldly dismissed by the female employees several times. Every time Harris looked downhearted and ended up talking to a male colleague, I don't think she's trying to win over the men. She's just cornered into such situations. I'm sure these female employees gossip about me too, just with different content. If Harris is spoken about like this, I'm sure I get it worse. I'm probably just not seeing it because I'm the oldest among the female employees and can do my job well. Interpersonal relationships can be so exhausting. I'm glad I don't have to get involved. Thinking that, I sat on the toilet until they finished fixing their makeup and left. Then, on another day, Harris was unusually mingling and talking with the female employees. I was surprised but glad to see her fitting in with the other women and decided to take my lunch break. As I got up from my seat to go outside with my packed lunch as usual, I passed by them, and Harris suddenly called out to me. When I turned around, she asked me a nonsensical question, why aren't you married, ma'am? It's clearly a malicious question. As I was struggling to answer, I could hear the female employees behind Harris chuckling. Even the wide-eyed male employees started to laugh. Led on by them, one of the female employees said, Hey, that's rude, but then praised Harris, saying, You're such a funny girl, Harris. From then on, Harris started to ask me more and more disrespectful questions that left me at a loss for answers, thinking she would be praised for making fun of me. Miss Thompson, have you ever had a boyfriend? How many years have you not had a boyfriend? How many people have you been with? Are you by any chance not interested in men? Harris kept asking me these personal questions without considering my feelings at all, and the level of disrespect only increased over time. The surrounding employees seemed to find it amusing, encouraging Harris as if they wanted her to do more. I suppose she was happy to be recognized as one of them by the other female employees. Trying to meet their expectations, she kept intensifying her remarks to me. As things escalated, she began to flaunt her own status to me. My boyfriend just gave me a designer bag as a gift the other day. I'm going to a high-end restaurant tonight that's booked out for the next six months. Do you just eat macaroni and cheese at home, Thompson? This kind of petty one-upmanship had been her modus operandi. Miss Thompson, you don't seem to have any connection with luxury items. How pathetic, she would throw in with her sarcasm. Rather than feeling angry, I was beginning to find it impressive. As this silly back and forth went on, I found myself increasingly burdened with Miss Harris's work. Miss Harris, who was rather overbearing, had an invincible disregard for fear. The other female employees seemed unable to deal with her, and she rapidly turned into a monster. Then one day, after some time had passed, something happened. When Miss Harris came to work, she was very upbeat and started talking to me. I got engaged, she said, showing me a picture of her fiancé, even though I hadn't asked. When I responded with a polite, that's nice, and tried to return to my work, Miss Harris continued to chatter on. My fiancé is really rich, kind, handsome, and perfect. Are you jealous? I'm going to be happy, leaving you here, Miss Thompson. With that, she brought her smartphone screen closer to me. She continually belittled me and bragged about how amazing her fiancé was and how she had hit the jackpot by getting engaged to him. Well, I am jealous. Congratulations, truly, I said. Miss Harris, looking satisfied, said, Okay, 
I'm going back to work and return to her desk. When it comes to this, it's almost refreshing. I sighed deeply. I need to focus on my work. Just as I was trying to switch my mindset, I heard the other female employees talking behind me. She's really getting carried away, isn't she? Seriously, just because she's getting married, she's acting so giddy. What's up with that? Like she can actually be happy after getting married. She probably can't even do housework and might cheat on him. I agree. She's definitely the type who would get divorced quickly once her charms wear off. Totally agree. As one of them began to vent, the others joined in, spewing complaints. Out of pure curiosity, I asked the female employees, weren't you all friends with Miss Harris? What are you talking about? No way, they all laughed. We would never be friends with a woman like that. It's just her thinking we're her friends. I see. It seems that Miss Harris had managed to make enemies of the female employees again. They didn't mind when she was bullying me, but as she increasingly tried to one-up me, she started doing the same thing to the other female employees. I sighed quietly. Aren't you the ones who boosted and fanned her flames? From then on, Miss Harris boasted about her fiancé almost daily. Apparently, he comes from a prestigious family, is highly educated, earns a high income, and his parents' home is located in an upscale residential area in Manhattan. This has nothing to do with you. Miss Thompson, who always looks so shabby, it seems like you could continue to live a simple life alone. The only people who would marry you are likely to be leftovers. Nobody high profile or high earning would ever consider someone like you. You may have to settle for someone uneducated and unemployed, but even such a man might refuse you considering you're a dried up old maid. Miss Harris would say, laughing, I'll invite you to my wedding, Miss Thompson. It will be your last shining moment. I certainly did not want to attend that. I couldn't care less about her wedding dress, and I'm sure I'd be seated with those female employees. Even if the venue is glamorous and the food is delicious, I wouldn't want to be there. As I was thinking this, Miss Harris said, Oh, I just remembered, I'll show you a picture of his parents' house, and she began manipulating her smartphone. I wasn't interested in her fiancé's parents' house at all. Oh, I found it. This is it. Miss Harris said, bringing her smartphone screen closer to me. I saw a house that looked familiar. Isn't it amazing? Such a gorgeous and wonderful house being his parents' home. They must be extremely wealthy. All this will eventually be mine. I'm on top of the world. I'm now part of the rich gang. If I feel like it, I'll invite you over, Miss Thompson, Miss Harris said, but my eyes couldn't leave the screen of her smartphone. Oh my, did that surprise you? Feel free to take a look at the pictures of the interior as well, she said as she slid the phone. More familiar scenes appeared. You can't see or enter such a luxurious house, can you? Are you envious? I cut her off in a hurry and said, Um, this is actually my parents' house. What? What are you talking about? Miss Harris exclaimed. Well, I mean, this house in the photo... I said. Miss Harris looked shocked. Huh. What are you saying? Just because you're envious, you shouldn't make such a lame claim. No matter what she says, I'm convinced this is my parents' house. Besides, I'm an only child, so it's not like I have brothers who could marry her or anyone else. The only ones living in this house are my parents, who have entered their sixties, and our beloved dog. Miss Harris seemed to think I was joking and laughed out loud. Oh, Miss Thompson, you're so high level, keeping a straight face while fooling around. But I said seriously, no, I'm not kidding. This is really true, she said, pointing at the photo. But look, his car is parked here too, right? And how could you take pictures inside a house that isn't yours? Despite her objections, the photos she was showing me were undoubtedly of my parents' house. The placement of things, the floor plan, it was all exactly like the house I grew up in. Then it hit me. I remembered a sales guy who was often coming and going from my parents' house. I met him there and talked to him. He was desperately trying to get a contract, 
telling my parents all sorts of convenient things. I asked Miss Harris her fiancé's name. It was the same name as the salesman. I see, so that man, Aaron, was pretending my parents' house was his own to impress her. What a lame guy. Does he think he can get away with that? I noticed other signs that Aaron wasn't a very good person. He was always smiling, and even when my parents said, we think we'll pass on the contract this time, he would cheerfully respond, I see, well, I'll come by again next time. But the moment he left the house, I saw from my bedroom window that he had a really scary look on his face. Maybe he was just angry because he didn't get the contract, but it left me with a really bad feeling. There's no need to tell Miss Harris about this, but that house is definitely my parents' house. I won't back down on that. Miss Harris was raising her voice. What? That house is Miss Thompson's parents' house. That's impossible. No matter how much I explained, she wouldn't believe me, so I decided to take her to my parents' house after work that day. We arrived at my parents' house, and I took her through the gate. I opened the front door and said, I'm home. Then my parents came out with a smile, welcome home. When you said you were coming home all of a sudden, we wondered what was going on. You even brought a friend. It's not often we see you, but it's nice to see your face after a long time. We have to serve something since you brought a friend. We have some sweets we brought when we went on a trip to France with your aunt. We'll serve them with some tea. Looking at Miss Harris, my parents smiled happily. I mentioned the name of her fiance and asked my parents about him. Oh, the salesman. He was here just the other day. Hearing my parents respond like that, Miss Harris seemed to accept the truth. When we arrived in my room, she suddenly began to cry. What happened? Are you sad because you were lied to about his family home? Sure, being lied to might have been shocking, but it was not that much of a disaster, I thought. Then Miss Harris said, I'm sorry, and began to talk about her engagement with Aaron. Apparently, Miss Harris met Aaron at a social gathering. At that time, Aaron told her that he held a position in a major corporation, and when they were alone, he informed her that his family was wealthy, which caused her to fall for his good looks and status. After that, they went on a few dates, and their relationship developed. However, despite Aaron's position in a major corporation, he turned out to be surprisingly stingy. At first, he paid for all of their dates, but gradually he started making Miss Harris pay, claiming he had no cash on hand. When Miss Harris said something about it, Aaron suddenly proposed, saying, Actually, I want to save money because I'm going independent. Plus, we need to save for our wedding fund, right? Caught off guard by the proposal, Miss Harris got carried away and started to shell out cash as he directed. Aaron took advantage of this, borrowing more and more money from Miss Harris, and before she knew it, she had handed him a substantial sum. Still, she fell blindly for his sweet words like, it's for a happy married life together. If you look at it objectively, you would think that if his family was really wealthy, he wouldn't need to borrow money from his girlfriend. But Miss Harris, who had fallen head over heels in love, seemed to trust him completely, but now it seems even Miss Harris had come to realize it was a lie. Miss Harris came to apologize to me in tears. Miss Thompson, I'm really sorry. I apologize for the terrible attitude I've been showing until now. I know I can't be forgiven, but please let me apologize. She explained in tears that she was led by the other female employees to harass me. She didn't really like to gossip or show off, but she was instigated by the other female employees and pressured to join in, or else she would be left out like before. It was hard, but she said she managed to endure because she had Aaron. Again, she apologized and shed big tears. Seeing Miss Harris like that made me feel sorry for her. She was really struggling in her own way. We could lead those female employees, but the liar must be dealt with. In a way, my family and I are involved too. We need to teach him a lesson. Let's teach that guy a lesson. I decided to have Miss Harris call Aaron. When we arranged to meet at a cafe, he changed his complexion as soon as he saw my face. 
Aaron, looking uncomfortable, lowered his gaze. I told him I was going to report his misuse of the photo of his family home and his deception of my junior colleague to his workplace. He turned pale and started apologizing, please forgive me for that. So why did you lie and deceive Miss Harris? Apparently, he had approached her because he thought she had money since she wore nice clothes and branded bags. He began to brazen it up and turned to Miss Harris and said something outrageous. Mainly, it's your fault for coming after me without seeing through my lies. I showed you a nice dream, so you should consider it a gratitude fee. I was stunned at his audacity. It reminded me of the hidden side I saw from the window at my family home. You proposed marriage. That's why Miss Harris trusted you, I said. Then Aaron replied with a defiant laugh. Well, I thought it was the best thing to say. What do you mean? So you had no intention of marrying Miss Harris? Well, yes. I'm not thinking about getting married right away. Aaron casually made such a statement. Miss Harris couldn't take it anymore and started crying. Seeing Miss Harris crying, Aaron looked annoyed. What a terrible man he is. There's no need to show mercy to someone like him. I pulled out a voice recorder and said, I recorded what you just said, and you know you can demand compensation for breaking off an engagement without a reasonable cause. Aaron turned pale and frantically said, Whoa, whoa, that's gonna be a problem. Choose between reporting this incident to the company or repaying the money you borrowed from Miss Harris along with some damages, I said. Hearing this, Aaron replied, I'll pay back the money, and dropped his shoulders. That's how he came to an agreement that he would pay back Miss Harris. It seems that Aaron was cheating, and his mistress was spending money lavishly more than his salary could cover, but he was so smitten with her that he was siphoning money from Miss Harris to keep her satisfied. After Aaron left the cafe, Miss Harris tightly grasped my hand and repeatedly expressed her gratitude. She apologized once again for everything that had happened and promised to change her ways. Since then, Miss Harris has become quite fond of me and no longer exhibits her previous attitude. Even when other female employees act unpleasantly, she no longer lets it bother her and concentrates on her work. Seeing her like this, the female employees still badmouth her, but I think they're just not worth dealing with. Later, when one of the female employees got engaged, a nasty war of words began among them. Petty jealousies and grudges started affecting their work, and a fed-up supervisor escalated the matter, resulting in each of them being transferred to different departments. Being on their own, these women weren't particularly harmful, and it seems they are now working quietly in their new departments. Our department has become peaceful and calm, and Miss Harris has been able to work more freely. Lately, Miss Harris and I have been having lunch together, sharing our hobbies. Thanks to her, I've developed an interest in fashion, and she's become a big fan of Enheim. I may not be friendly with everyone, but having someone like Miss Harris whom I can trust has made working at this company more enjoyable than ever. Money and status may be attractive, but they are only a part of life, not everything. It may be plain, but I believe that being able to live a peaceful and calm daily life is truly the greatest happiness. I made myself lunch today. I want to be a better cook, so please have a taste," she said. All right, let's go to a nearby park and eat, I replied. Yes, she replied happily.